Hello folks, welcome to Duino Tech channel. Today I'm going to help you to build free code cam front end project library uh, 25 plus 5 clock project. So this is uh, the last project on the tutorial for front end uh, uh, projects and uh, at the end you are going to get a certificate and if we came here to this free code camp uh, page where we have list of this actually for our end uh, development libraries at the end of this course you need to do these five different uh, projects and then you are going to get uh, a, a certificate and i already created actually tutorials for the previous uh, four projects and that already here in my youtube channel if you didn't watch that try to go back and watch and then try to watch this tutorial also you can build the five projects i already have this free code come from in the libraries project already have this four projects are done already and i'm going to add this tutorial to this uh, playlist and i will leave this playlist down of this video so this is the one that this is the one that we are going to build today and this for, for this uh, free code camp uh, example and we are going to just to give it a different style and also we are going to use a react uh, hook uh, library to build this and this originally created actually in react uh, previous version which is a class component and today we are going to use it to build uh, this in react hook or react functional components and also it's going to be actually uh, straightforward and i'm going to explain it line by line with the end basically we'll create this uh, project and if we try to run it and uh, select here maybe this sometimes not be selected uh, it's going to be called 25 plus 5 clock and run a uh, test and this is going to take some second and the, the end it will give you the result as you see that we have 29 out of 29 so the style is different the functions that we are going to uh, build or create also is going to be different completely different from free code camp and it's going to be much simpler from what they actually created i was just comparing what we are doing today with what they did before it was a little bit complex what they did it in previous uh, react version but today we are going to use just react function component or hooks component to build this as you see that we have the test pass uh, 29 uh, out of 29 and also as you see that i can i got my certificate actually if i didn't get it passed so i shouldn't get this certificate but i got the certificate with end of this tutorials and i will encourage you also if to go back actually to watch previous tutorials and to build this uh, previous four projects and today finish as the fifth one and then you can get your uh, certificate and also before i go to next point also actually i created another uh, list of tutorials for responsive web design with the end also you are going to get this certificate five different projects and at the end you are going to also to get this certificate also for uh, responsive web design uh, application and also i already created playlists for this uh, if i scroll here at the top we have this here this playlist for responsive web design projects five different projects and after finishing these tutorials you are going to get uh, this certificate i just showed you for responsive web designs so and uh, that all what is now for, for uh, free code camp projects and also will continue in future to adding more projects or uh, building more projects for different uh, uh, certificate and courses and if you are new to my channel don't forget to press subscribe button and enable the notification bell so you can get all videos and tutorial when i upload them to the channel and also try to press some up if you like the content this support me to continue add more tutorials and more uh, videos if you have any comment an idea and a suggestion don't hesitate to leave that down on the comment section and even try to just let me know about the tutorial and how do you find that and uh, let's just stop talking here and just go to showing you the code and start building this project happy coding time So we are going to open this uh, build a 25 plus 5 clock project uh, on new tab. So I already open it here in this page, uh, this tab. And from here we can start read actually the requirements and also the user stories. So as the requirement already, so you can actually use any front end uh, library. 
uh, or just a uh, normal uh, HTML CSS with the JavaScript, but we are going to use React uh, for this, React.js. Uh, library we are going to use it for a front end library and also we are going to follow all these user stories start from the first one until the last one which uh, i think the 20 uh, 29th or 28th so we have around 28 user uh, different user stories so basically firstly what we will try to go uh, we can see the example that we already have it here so i opened this already in this tab here this is the example that for free code camp uh, we should build something similar and these ones are already the the ones that I built and today that we are going to build and I'm going to close this uh, tab here I can also right click here and open this on code bin so I can open new tab here and then from this page you can start to create a new pin and here where we can start build our uh, application and here in HTML area, I'm going to just start at just uh, a div with an ID uh, called app. So this is then where we can render our React app on the HTML DOM. And just close this div. And then inside here, we are going to, in this CSS, we are going to add the CSS section. But for now, we are going to close this area. And so before actually start building anything so the plan that how i'm going to build this project actually because if you see the project at the first it seems like a big project so you need to divide that to um, small steps so then you can start implementing this so our plan firstly will start by building the ui and then next step we're going to build a simple functionality then at the end we'll focus on the complex uh, functionalities so that will help us to just focus in uh, small steps and get them done and then go to next step so that what we are going to do so basically the first step obviously we are going to create this react app as i mentioned first we'll have this uh, div here with an ID element that where we are going to display the app on the HTML DOM and on JavaScript I'm going to here just select this icon here and then we need to search for react This is how we can import react this first one and also we need to add a react dash DOM We are we need this only these two packages and after adding them also I need to come at the top here I need to select uh, Papil, this as a processor, JavaScript processor, so the browser can understand the React code, and press save and close. And this already, let's collapse the CSS area for now, it will import these two packages here. And on this tutorial, I'm going to uh, copy some code that already I have, and I'm going to explain this line by line, and sometimes I'm going to type, so just to speed up the tutorial and not make it longer than it should be. And for now, let me just, I uh, will create a simple component here, call it app. And app, and this is just a functional component, very simple functional component. For now, just let's uh, add h1, and inside this h1, just let's add hello world. And this is not going to work because we need to render this on the DOM. And uh, I will just bring this line here. Uh, this is how we can connect, actually, our component with this HTML page, so you will call this uh, React DOM dot render, and then you will pass the app component and how to access the HTML page by using the document dot get element by ID, then as this ID which the app already we defined here. So this simply now we have this React app is created, and here we have hello world. It so this first step has been done. So next step, we are going to build the UI. As I mentioned, so how I can break this UI? Basically, uh, I will break this. This is going to be the main title. And then I will have uh, another uh, two children. Uh, so this child will represent this break lens. Another child will represent this session uh, lens too. And so, and basically, so the title will be first child for a parent and these two uh, children will be another uh, represent in one child and third one is going to be this time session also the third uh, child so basically we'll have three uh, row and in each row will represent this section so this section has two child this row and this row has one child and this row will going to be have uh, two child which is this session and also this start and uh, reset icons so let's go and try start building this I already have the HTML for this section, so I'm going to remove this actual demo data here. 
I'm going to open acrylic races and then I'm going to bring this HTML code and I'm gonna as I mentioned I'm going to explain this also line by line so uh, I will not just put it there and we'll leave it and let's add more space the project is gonna not work and we'll go, uh, we are going to get this error here I will uh, let you know what the error is coming from so basically how uh, first me let me just try to explain this I created just this uh, HTML uh, div element wrapper to wrap everything because React always to require you to wrap all the children by one parent. So we have this one here. And I'm adding this also, this uh, wrapper here. So this wrapper to have this all this section here. And then uh, outside this wrapper, I have this audio element. So this audio element, we are going to use it later to be to play it on the break session or on the break length. When the break time will come, then this audio it will be played. And inside this, this is the second child or this main child here we have, which is this wrapper. And this wrapper has a first row, which will be this uh, title. So first row, which will be this title. And the second row will be uh, this uh, break session length. And the third uh, child is going to be this time wrapper so basically we'll have only three row as i mentioned so this first row a second row and this third row so let's see this first row which is very simple just html uh, uh, heading or h2 heading and then the second child is going to be uh, this here this section here which will represent uh, the break lens and also the session lens let's see this uh, this second child has a class so I'm adding this class is only for styling and uh, so this parent has first child which to represent this uh, break lens which is has title and also has another uh, wrapper here for this which represents the two buttons first button which will be increase button and second button is going to be decrease and between these two button uh, I'm going to have uh, this uh, strong HTML element which where we can display the uh, this uh, prec uh, lens, which we can decrease it and increase it. So this here, this area, basically will have a title. And instead of this arrow, I'm going to use actual button. So basically this will be uh, increase button and this decrease button in my side. And at the, at the bottom here is going to display the lens uh, or the prec lens. So as you see here, uh, we have this button, which just to, uh, to display this uh, increase as you see here we have this title and also this button to display decrease and at the middle we are going to display the actual break lens and as you see that now we have uh, on each button we have on click and this on click uh, it will fire this function called handle break uh, increase function and in this button uh, decrease is going to call handle break decrease function we don't have this function now but we are going to create them and explain them also as uh, what i'm doing here and at, at between these two line or two buttons i'm going just to display the break lens which we are going to have a state the initial state for this break lens is going to be five where I brought this from, so this is part of the user stories here, so it will tell you the initial value for that is going to be 5. As we have also the session, um, the session length is going to be 25, and for this uh, break length is going to be 5. And if we come back again, so this for break length uh, section here, which has a title and also has two buttons, and between these two buttons, we have the value for the break length. And the second child inside this parent here, the second child is going to be this uh, session lens, which has the same as the break lens, has a title. And also it has this wrapper for the two buttons. The first button will display, uh, it will be representing also increase uh, this uh, session lens. And the second button is going to be for decrease the session lens. And between these two buttons, we are going to display the actual session lens. So, and this each button has also on click handler. So, on click, so basically for this lens is going to be called this handle session increase, and for decrease is going to be called handle session decrease. And you can call this actually functions, and this here, these buttons, whatever names you need, increment or decrement or increase or uh, in, uh, decrease. So, it's up to you basically, but the process should be uh, meeting the user stories requirements. 
And what's the user storage requirement in these buttons, basically? So this is where we will start to add these uh, IDs. As you see, the initial ID for this title, uh, the title has that break, break length, has already ID called break label. And this break label, it will require be it required here as he has ID break label is going to be displayed, display the title of the break uh, length, uh, this one. And same for the button, it will have an ID for this uh, break uh, increment and this ID will be used by uh, free code cam test so later can uh, actually select this element and test the value for these elements and also for where we're displaying the break length value uh, also this has an ID this ID so this ID ha you have to add this ID and otherwise your test is not gonna pass so because this ID will be used by free code cam to select this item and test it so where we can display the break length and same for the session length uh, we'll have an id for each button to represent a session increment and session decrement and also an id where we're displaying the session length for session length this is the second row basically now we explain the first row, row and second row this is the first row was this one for the title and this is the second row and third row where we display the timer which uh, I'm adding a class as a wrapper to just to add some CSS for this timer. And also here in this, this inside this actually uh, timer, we have three uh, children inside this wrapper. The first child is going to, to represent the timer, which has a class also timer just for adding some CSS. What we have inside this uh, timer, we have a title where we display the, the session type. For example, is it going to be a session? or uh, a break this one here i'm going to showing you so here to display is it going to be the session or is going to be the break time so basically it's going to be session length or break length because this is going to be changed when the session time uh, ended then it will switch to break where it will change the title and if i come back again the second child where we display the timer itself so this time here basically this time and uh, 25 minutes and zero zero this is where we display the time itself and also as you see we have a function here called time formatter we don't have that now but we are going to create that sooner and same as here the title is also passed as a as a props and we are going to create these props because as i mentioned the title is going to be dynamic basically the initial title is going to be session but when the session time finished and switched to break then it's going to be changed to break break instead of uh, session and all this is required by here frequent camp uh, user stories and if i come back again now this is the first child inside this row and the second child it's a button which has a start uh, or a stop so when you press in this button it will start the timer uh, or stop it if it's already is, uh, is, is working or is running and also has on click which is this it will call uh, another function called handle play so this is where we can control the timer to start or to stop and we are going to create this function too and also has an id this id to use by free code cam can select this element and then test it to see if it uh, work as expected or not and the id has to be start a stop uh, or a star underscore stop and the second or the third child is going to be another button and this button for reset basically when pressing this reset is going to change everything to default value and uh, has an id also uh, called reset and have to or has to have this uh, uh, reset id and also has another on click and this on click it will call function called hand reset which will do some process to reset everything to be default uh, and this function as also is going to be created we didn't create it yet and basically this is the second or this is the third row inside this and at the end here at the bottom we have this audio element has an id this id has to be deep because this has a requirement also by this uh, free code cam user story if you read at the bottom you will find that and also we are going to use this id later to select this element and we can play it and stop this uh, audio and uh, reload uh, this auto basically to reload the audio and the source element this is where we can add our uh, audio source and i just used actually the free code, free code comes uh, audio source because it was hard to find different one and we are going to use this just for implementation so basically this is aui and it's not going to work as i mentioned it's going to fail because we have here a list of variables and functions that are not exist for now to avoid this issue i'm going to actually create a dummy 
variable here and just to get the app uh, UI working and later we are going to uh, create a proper functions. Let's start by the second uh, child here which has uh, this first function. Uh, let me call this function here, but this function here as a props and this also this uh, break lens, also this function. I'm going to bring actual all variable here and just to avoid the failure for now and later we are going to create them. So now I added all variables and functions. We should see our code. As you see here, we have now this HTML is displayed here. And I'm going actually to bring also the CSS. That is just CSS. We don't need to focus on that. You can implement the CSS in the way that you find better, or you can use the same approach just to make the app look nicer. But we are going to focus more on the functionality and how we can build the React functions and uh, also get all these requirements meet the free code cam uh, user stories and if you go back come back again here also i'm going as i mentioned to just bring the css i already have it here so uh, you can go actually over this and try actually just read it line by line it's not doesn't have any like complex uh, CSS here and also I'm going to leave the code source down of the video so you can come back later and find uh, the CSS how I did it. So basically that now is changing just the HTML to make it look like this and same with the initial uh, timer that we built but this now if we do anything it will not work because it's just a static HTML. Uh, but before we actually go to the next step, let's add this icon here where we can start to test the app and see if already we got some actually test pass. If I come back again here at the end, we have this URL. This URL we can add it to our code or to our project, then we can see the test icon. And if you come to this here in this uh, JavaScript section and this setting icon, press this. And uh, at the end here, add this source and then just save it and it will close, it will show an icon here. As you see, this we have this icon, and from here you can you need to select this, 25 plus five clock, and then uh, run test, and that will take some second, and let's find out which, how many actually we test we got them pass already. Woohoo, that already we have eight, out of 29 pass without doing actual the action functionality it's just to build the HTML elements and pass this ID for each element and that already we have eight uh, user story pass or eight test cases pass from 29 test cases. So that's good step. So next step now we are going to implement the simple functions. So for example, we'll start by this for example handle increase and decrease. We are going to also to create a state initial state for the session lens and also for, for prec lens. So first we are going to start by creating the prec lens uh, state. So here as the top here where we can start actually write our state. So first one is going to be called prec lens. And the, the second function for the state is going to be called set. So this way we can use it to update the state itself break lens and the value is going to be react uh, react dot use state and the initial value is going to be 5 for break lens and I got the initial value actually here also as I mentioned from the uh, free code cam requirements and the initial value is going to be 5 and now instead of this break lens uh, as you see here I added variable here I'm going to remove it from here and uh, now we should have uh, five here to be displayed. If I just save that, let me remove this extra comma and save it and uh, should display five. Now this we have five. And uh, let's also create another initial state for the session uh, lens. It's gonna be a session. And uh, it's gonna be uh, or session lens. And this is gonna be set le session lens. And the initial value is going to be 25 and also this from the free code camp uh, user store requirements and if i change this session also that i hardly coded here which is going to be this one if i remove it we should uh, display here 25 it should display 25 
and as you see this is now 25 now we have this initial two values let us create this uh, fun this function here when we press in this in decrease or this increase button for the break lens if you press now nothing is happening but if we create this function then uh, we should actually get something work we can update the state and this is just gonna be a simple function uh, inside here basically what it will do it will just update uh, this uh, this decrease or this spread session uh, it will increase it by one every time you press in increase it will increase it by one and uh, actually also one of the requirement it shouldn't act exceed the exceed 20 uh, exceed 60 so we need to add a condition here say if this uh, session lens uh, less than 60 then try to update or increase the session by calling this set break or increase the break uh, lens uh, instead not uh, session and update this break uh, lens by update uh, by using the current lens and then add additional one to that or increment that by one so this this is what is doing this function uh, basically if we save that and uh, let's try to remove it from here increase handle increase break lens if we save it if we now try to press increase we should see this five increase by one and that is not work let's see what's wrong if this oh this is a question here so this here this condition is wrong so break lens should be if break lens less than 60 then try to increase that by one basically if the break lens less than 60 try increase by one which when you get or reach to 60 it will not do anything and actually also uh, let me just try it now we can test that uh, by just press increase if you see this now is increased but if you press decrease decreases will not work which will be similar to this here and we are going to just duplicate this here and I'm going to modify this to make it just more readable and change this by decrease instead of increase and here is going to be the opposite so it's uh, going to, to decrease until one so this is the in minimum value is going to be one so we need to make sure if the lens uh, greater than one if the lens greater than one then try to decrease it so when it will reach one it will not do anything it's just then uh, decrease that value by minus one so which will be the break lens and minus one then it will decrease the value if we save it and let's remove this uh, handle break uh, decrease function and uh, just to use this one here if we save it and try again to press decrease now that's decrease until one but now i'm pressing it will not go down and same if i pressed until get 60 it will stop on 60 it will not go more than 60. So now I'm in Sikista, I'm pressing, nothing is happening. So now that we got this, now work fine. And same we need to do for this uh, session lens to incre increment and decrement or increase or decrease. And I'm going to actually just to copy this same function, two functions. I'm going to just to change the name of the functions. So the first function, the first function is going to be called this handle session increase. And instead of this break lens, it's going to be this session lens. And also be careful actually if you are copying because it's sometimes you can mix things together. And also going to change this break lens also to session lens. And instead of set break uh, lens, it's going to be set session lens. And that is going to be changed here. And also I'm going to change that here. And this session lens instead of break lens and also i'm going to ha change this handle decrease instead of handle or handle session decrease instead of handle break uh, decrease so now if i save this two which you will do the same basically you can go the maximum is going to be 60 you can decrease until 60 and you can you can increase until 60 and you can decrease until uh, one and if i just remove this two again from this line here to use this actual two functions if i save it so now after saving this if i come back again here and press decrease it will decrease until one and then it shouldn't go lower than one so that now stop in one and if i increase until 60 also it will just stop in 60.
So now that in security, it will just stop there. So we got these two work fine properly. Now these two functions, as I, I mentioned previously, these are simple functions, so are working fine. What next? Basically, we need to have also this state for play. And this play, we use it actually as a condition uh, here on, let's see where we use it here, on to disable a button. So basically, uh, for this button increase and decrease, we need to disable this button when the timer is playing. So basically when the timer is running, when you press in this button, we need to make them disabled. How we can do that? By just passing this disable for each button and the value is going to be play. If play is true, it will be dis uh, disabled. If play is false, it will be work fine. Uh, let's just create a state here for play. And just let me copy this line and duplicate it. And this is going to be called play. And here set play. And the value is going to be false because it's going to be boolean. And now we have also play state. We are going to remove this from here. And also next one, we have this handle play and handle reset and title. Let me just uh, bring actually title. I uh, already have it here, just one line. So here just after this, I'm going to add this line here. This is the title. So what the title is actually created from it will check uh, if the timing type is session we return session otherwise we return prick so basically we don't have this timer uh, or timing type yet it is also state we are going to create this so we can use it later to display different title here so as you see now we don't have a title here so i'm going just to duplicate also this it's going to be called uh, timing type and set uh, timing type and the value the initial value is going to be called session and save it now we should see here a title so to display proper title so we don't have that until now because now we use this hard-coded one let's remove the title from here and if we save it now we should see session displayed here yeah, now we have session because this is the initial value. We'll check is if the uh, timing type is session, will display session. Otherwise, it will display break. So, and this session type will be changed when the timing, this for example, reach zero, then it will switch to be break instead of session. And we'll create also a function for that, which uh, it will be this hand reset. But it first, let's create uh, this function here. It's called time formatter. And this time formatter, I already have a function. I'm going to just explain it. And after after this handle, let's let's have more space here. And after this line here, let me add more line here. I'm going to bring this formatter is just a very simple function here. It's just create a time formatter. And inside this time formatter, basically we'll uh, try we'll try first to create a variable for minutes and for seconds. And then we can uh, actually format this minute and seconds to display like if this uh, time, uh, this seconds less than 10, then to display zero on the uh, left side and then the second on the right side. So basically that will be, for example, like this, zero, five, zero, four, zero, three, until zero, zero. And same for minute, of, if the minute less than 10, it will be, for example, zero, one or zero, two, zero, three, until zero, nine. So this just to, for, to, to format that and make it look same as uh, uh, free count camp user uh, story requirements. It has to be in this format. And if you come back again here, so also this function, it uses value called time left and time left. We don't have it yet. So it's also an state. Let's create this time left state here. And it's going to be called uh, time left. And the function is going to be called set time left. And the initial time is going to be uh, this 25 uh, minute. And if we need to convert this 25 minute to second, it's going to be 1500 second. And this is the initial time. And the left time, it has to be in this second because later we can convert it to this format as we created this function. If we save it, and now we should see the proper timing here, which is going to be still uh, 25. Let me remove this hard coded. This was hard coded to this. If I remove this variable, so now it should show the one that we just created with the function. And after reload, let's see that is still same. Basically, it will display a similar one. Next two functions, we need this handle play and handle reset. Uh, let's start by handle play. And handle play also. Uh, 
where we can actually start to place the timer and stop it and before that actually let me bring it so after this line after a timer format let me add more space here i'm going to add this code and also i'm going to explain explain this line by line i process a time out and this handle play function that is the function that i mentioned what this handle uh, play it will do basically first uh, it will clear out the timer or this time out and inside we'll check uh, this uh, we have this condition we'll check if play is true it will try to update it to be false if uh, no, if false then it will update it to be true basically it will switch just play and actually i just figured out now that actually this we can do something different uh, more to smart here we can just do this line which we can do the same job we can do the opposite if if like this it will switch if play is true it will make it false if false it will make it true which it will do this uh, four line we can use just only one line which will do the same job for us and here so now we have only two line first line will clear the time out and then it will update the play state so the play state which we have here at the top the initial value is going to be false and it will switch that to false true and then uh, to control the timer and also it will just clear this time out and this time out what it will do basically let me explain this is the most important one here so this one has also set has only just set time out like very simple set time out and inside this set time out we have a condition we'll check if there is a left time for example if this left time more than zero and then it, it is playing if it is playing then try to uh, uh, decrement or decrease uh, this time left by one second for example because the left time uh, or time left already as I, we created the initial one here is going to be seconds so we have uh, 15,000 or 1500 seconds and that every time we call this set time out it will uh, uh, decrease it or decrement that by one second so which will be called here after each second so that this is a time out i'm going to bring this time out to top uh, just after states because i'm going to use it in different uh, sections too and after here i'm going to add this time out now we have this play we have this play function or handle play let's remove this handle play and uh, now if we save it uh, let's come back to our code here we should if we press this uh, stop start now should this start the timer and if we press nothing is happening should be start playing uh, let's find out why this is not playing because react it is a component and to re-render the component you need to tell this component to start uh, re-render how we can do that we can call as uh, use uh, react.use effect and then we can actually update the component i'm going to bring this uh, use effect so after this handle play i'm going to add these two functions here so ignore this for now this clock uh, this clock function i'm going to first explain this this react.use effect it is a, a, a function that it will update the component depends what you have here in this uh, uh, array so basically when play value change between true false if is that change then try to render the component and also if the time left is changed for example from uh, two to one second then also or from one second to two and also try to uh, re-render the component and also if this time out is uh, cleared for example if it stopped or it start working also try to render the component and when the component it render or always it will call this function called clock and what this clock it will be it will do basically uh, it will check if play is true is playing it will start the timer basically in this scenario uh, if this uh, is play is true it will just tell this time out to start work and when this time out it will start work it will try to decrement the time left by minus one then our time here it will start by decrement the time or decrease the time from 25 minutes and go to uh, less than that and this is the condition here fair is basically uh what it will do here is a clock basically if it's play or, or if play is true if play is not true for example otherwise it will just clear out the time always you have to clear this so to get the test pass 
So if not playing, then just clear the time out. So basically this clock, uh, always it will be called inside this use effect whenever this uh, use effect being called. So, and this use effect, it will be called whenever this play uh, value change or time left change or time out change. This is simple, this function, what it do. If now save this and try to press now, we should have it, this start working. And uh, now we have an error. Let me save this one. And if I save it and reload it and try again to press start and let's now see the console what error we have here uh, it says that a restart time is not uh, fun defined so we have this restart time inside uh, clock I didn't mention that so basically in line number 20, uh, 58 we call the time out to start play the time and um, we have this also this restart or reset time function we don't have it now i'm going to just come out this line we are going to talk about this if we save it clear the console always try to find out to check your console to tell you if there is any error and if we start again now we should start but it didn't start yet uh, let's see what wrong we have here because this is a code telling us there is an issue here and let's see if i just copy out this line and let me check if I save it. Now the error gone. That seems uh, code bin doesn't like uh, common or common uh, common codes. If we just press again start, uh, still we have the error. Let's see where this error is. That didn't doesn't tell us. Let's see this set time left is not defined. Also, if you see in the console, set time left. Uh, let's see where we are using this. And set time left this inside this uh, set time left inside this time out and actually this one should be called uh, time set time left and this misspelled here let me bring this, remove this second one is a capital if I save that one and try it again should try this time we should got it work uh, woohoo, here we are finally so we have it work if I press again should stop the timer and now that is stopping woohoo now we got almost there so we are almost there so next last one we need to do we need to uh, create this reset function and also uh, I need to bring uh, this function that we had it just here after this set timeout this here uh, reset timer and also I'm going to explain this reset time also actually line by line so after this line here just before clock let me add the reset timer and so it's also actually is not that complex function uh, but has some scenario so what we do here in reset timer and this reset timer it will be played only when it is uh, actually clock is playing and what is do basically it will first we select the audio element uh, as i mentioned earlier we are going to use the id to select that audio element by using this document dot get element by id after selecting the element we'll check first if there is if there is a time still there is a time for example if the time more than more than zero uh, second and also if the timing type is equal to session if the time uh, the current time the session time and also the time more than one second uh, more than zero second and then inside try to implement this condition and uh, which it will update the time left uh, by using the current uh, prec prec lens multiplied by 60 because the prec lens is going to be in second we need to convert that to sorry the prec lens is going to be a minute we are we need to convert that to second uh, so in this and then we update the uh, time left to be the prec time instead of the session time and we are going to change the timing type is going to be prec the current time is going to be prec instead of uh, session and we are going to play the audio and this audio which will just telling you this is a prec time and second condition here basically we'll check also if there is a still left time and the timing type is prec now this is a prec then we need to update the timing left to be the session time which in minute multiply by 60 to be converted to seconds and also we are going to change the timing type to be uh, actually session instead of break because now it will start to play the session time and at the, this line uh, third line we are going to pause the audio to stop the audio and reset the timing of for this audio to be zero and this what is this reset time basically simply do basically if we save this 
uh, now we this is fine but still we have one more function here which is this handle reset and this handle reset it will be called when actually press this reset button and what it will do so this uh, reset function it will for example if we change this to any number different number instead of 25 and also if we change this to anything instead of 5 if this timing also uh, this time also actually should be reset when we update these uh, values here when we increment or decrement so this time also should be reset and let's just bring that reset function and I will explain that line by line so just here uh, before this reaccuse effect let me add this function here and basically this will reset everything to this will re reset everything to be default and here basically it will clear the timeout and will set the play uh, to be false and it sets the left time to be uh, 1500 second and break length to be 5 session length to be 25 and this uh, timing type is going to be session the initial one is going to be session and also it will select or we can select the audio and then stop the audio and set the audio time to be 0 that simply it will do that all it will do here if we save this and if we need to remove this variable here so now we brought all the variables and functions and if add the more space and now that we should all the function we need and only actually i noticed when we increase decrease the break length is work fine and when we decrease and increase the session length should update the session time that now is not working let me find out why it's not uh, not working so basically we have here a function to display the time this function called time formatter and this time formatter should be updated also automatically when we decrease or increase this timing because when we decrease and increase uh, also should update actually uh, the time left we, we need uh, when we call this handle session uh, increase or handle session decrease we need to also to update left time by calling this set left time and here in this line actually when we increase the session time we need also to increase this uh, time left which will be just a uh, time left and uh, that we can add 60 second more so it will be time left plus 60 which will be 60 second and same when we decrease the session we, de we need to decrease the time left by 60 second and now if i change that i save it and change it uh, let me try again if i now decrease should now just decrease with this uh, minutes and now that's working if i increase also is increasing now we got everything we, uh, we hope actually from first time we we'll get the test pass let's just try our our luck and make sure we save here everything and press here select uh, 25 plus 5 clock and run test so it seems the test is not working at all so let's find out if we try it manually uh, press start is start if press reset reset is not working let's see the reset say set time left again because we have a misspelling in previous code let me fix this uh, i always try to use the console will guide you so see here uh, this is going to be fair set the second one is going to be camel case if we save it now we should get it work if we clear this let's start the test again and run the test uh -huh. stop the test still is not working let's try again let's see what we missed uh, start the timing now start reset now also we have another error here uh, set time typing is not defined oh now also this next uh, issue here and uh, just let me just use this one and it's gonna i'm going to change this to be timing type instead if we save it and make sure this reload and try again hopefully this last time start reset that reset work now now we should uh, if we run the test we should get the test work at least and now that starts start work let's see and find out because it'll take some seconds and that is just fail now because there is another issue and set time left is not defined and uh, which line we are going to use this this one here and set time left this one and set time left do we have set time left yeah we have this let's just make sure we change all this here and this that's why i don't like actually 
this uh, pin or code bin uh, editor because you cannot uh, change multiple line in one time so it will take uh, a bit longer to change this okay if we save it let's try again so again let's try and that start working now and uh, let's see how hopeful it's still complaining set time left is not defined uh, line 62 let's see line 62 yes this one again this is a previous uh, this here the previous one t double t or camel case if you save it try again so always as i mentioned try to use the console log uh, so the console log it's going to or this console area is going to actually help you to debug uh, set timing type and this is going to be actually long it's going to be a long story i'm going to use this one and which here also this one here set timing type and i'm going to change this set timing type because it was in camel case and uh, let's see this time also let's go how it's gonna be actually there's some uh, lights at the end of of the dark let's see uh, hopefully a uh, finger cross we are almost there so I know this was longer, but I was going, I was trying to just go actually and explain line every line, and woohoo, we have at least actually 24 pass or out of 29. Let's find out what's wrong. So let's just save and reload again because sometimes actually also the browser, the browser caches do these things, and I had actually this experience when I was building this. Uh, sometimes. You need to just make sure reload the browser and try again. Uh, that is still actually is showing this, uh, but still also we have this uh, set time. Uh, it's not has is not defined, and that in line sixty seven. And let's let's find out in line sixty seven. Still this misformat sixty seven six seven. Uh, this one and if we save that maybe because of this still have an issue and uh, here make sure this also set time set time left set timing type and if we try it again hopefully this is gonna be last time let me clear also the console log if there is any error we can see that I tried to left all this actually just to showing you this some people they actually cut this from tutorials to just to speed up it but I'm going to show you this because also you follow you can debug and find out if there's anything stop not working woohoo that 9 20, 29 out of 29 we got it fast finally so this is the last tutorial for front end projects and you can get your certificate and uh, I hope this was useful and uh, clear for you and if you like the video, try to press thumb up and uh, try also to, if you didn't subscribe until now, try to subscribe to the channel and comment on the comment section and let me know about the tutorial. And uh, thank you for watching and see you in very next tutorial.